Not all crossover code is equal. Some indicators require specific rules to make the crossover code work correctly. Today, I cover the code required for crossovers with the Ichimoku indicator. Back after this brief message. DarwinX is a UK FCA regulated broker and asset manager on a mission to disrupt the financial trading, investing and asset management industries. If you're a talented trader looking to attract investor capital to your strategies, DarwinX is the fastest way for you to do this. We enable traders to raise third party investor capital and then charge success fees on high watermark profits. Additionally, DarwinX itself invests in its traders with our seed capital allocation program that allocates up to 90 million euros per year in successful trading strategies. So if all of that sounds interesting, learn more by clicking on the link here or you can find further links in the description right below. Now back to today's tutorial. There's something unique about the Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen lines of the Ichimoku indicator that means standard crossover code doesn't work properly. Let's take a closer look. So let's first of all define the problem. We have two types of crossover that are possible when we're thinking about the Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen lines. The first is what I call a clean crossover, and we can see an example of that here. So the red Tenkan Sen line crosses over the blue Kijun Sen line immediately. And so if we were to look at the two bars immediately after and before the crossover, we would see that the order of those had reversed, telling us that there'd been a crossover. And when looking at things like moving average crossovers, this is the coding technique that we can use. However, because of the way that the Tenkan and Kijun Sen lines are constructed, we very often have this type of crossover that you see here. So at this point, the red Tenkan Sen line is below the blue Kijun Sen. It then meets the Kijun Sen and stays at that same value for probably about five or six bars. And only after that does the Tenkan Sen break out above the Kijun Sen. So by using the simplistic rule we looked at a moment ago, will not tell us if this has crossed over or not. Because unless we move backwards until the point at which these two lines separate, we don't actually know if the red line came from below or came from above. If it came from below in this instance and then went above, we have a crossover. But if it came from above, then stayed at the same level and then went above again, we don't have a crossover. And so the code that I implemented when we looked at this strategy takes this into account. So up until this point, I just alluded to these two functions that I defined called get Ichimoku Tenkan Kijun cross open signal, bullish crossover, and then the same here for the bearish crossover. And I didn't go into these in any detail at all, but that's the topic of today's episode where I show you how I implemented the code to cater for this peculiar behavior that we don't see in normal moving average crossovers. So let's first take a look at the bullish crossover. So here we have the function and just like I showed in the last episode, I'm using here the Ichimoku indicator instance of what's called the CI Ichimoku class. So if you want more details on that, then please watch the previous episode. You'll find a link to it in the description below but I'm issuing a refresh command, which makes sure that the most recent values are ready and available to use. And you'll also notice that I've defined this as an array, and that's because this is a multi-symbol expert. So I'm using the same code iteratively to trade multiple symbols at the same time. Next, I'm calling two methods, the first called Tenkan Sen and the second called Kijun Sen, and this simply returns the value of these two lines for whichever bar I choose. 
Now in my own processing here, the bar to use for processing will be bar zero, which means it's the most recent price action bar. So you could, if you wanted to, simply hard code that and put a zero in here to get that most recent value for the Tenkan Sen. Now the next condition here is one that enables me to exit this function as quickly as possible in the instance where we can't be experiencing a bullish crossover. So in a bullish crossover, remember, the Tenkan Sen must have crossed over and above the Kijun Sen. And so this simple statement here says that if the Tenkan Sen is less than or equal to the Kijun Sen, then it's impossible that a crossover has occurred and it simply returns false without needing to do any further processing. So approximately 50% of the time it will return at this point very quickly, enabling the expert advisor to remain high performing. If however that isn't the case, then it starts to iterate backwards bar by bar looking to see if the crossover condition has occurred. So it increments the bar that we're interested in. And if you remember, as we increase the bar number, that goes further back in time. We get updated values for the Tenkan Sen and the Kijun Sen for that bar. And if the order of the Tenkan and Kijun Sen is the same as it was on the first check, then we know there hasn't been a crossover again. And so immediately we return from the function. However, if that's not the case, there are two possibilities. One is that the values have switched direction, in which case we've got an immediate crossover and we return true straight away. But remember, we have to cater for that other situation where they retain the same value for a period of time. And so when that is the case, we simply come back to the beginning of the while loop, increment the bar number once again, and re-perform the check. And eventually, we'll get to a point where the Tenkan Sen and Kijun Sen have different values. If it's the same as the original, we again return false. But if the order has changed, then we know we've got that true crossover and we can return true. And then for the bearish crossover, everything is simply reversed. And so coming back to the chart that we looked at a moment ago, the first condition looks for the Tenkan Sen being above the Kijun Sen, which we have here. And then for each time that the two values have the same value, it's that while loop in the code that would keep going back one bar at a time until we eventually get to this point where they have different values. And then depending on which way around these are, we returned either true or false. So I'll make both of these functions available for download and you'll find a link in the description below the video so that you can access those. But that now brings me to the end of our analysis of this particular Ichimoku crossover strategy. Now in the next episode, I'm going to move on to a new strategy and or indicator. So I've not completely decided yet. I might look at the Kumo breakout strategy, which of course would be using the Ichimoku indicator that we've now become familiar with. Or I might choose to start focusing on a completely new indicator. And as many of you will know, I made a request many episodes ago for people to put forward different indicators that they thought there would be value in me performing some analysis around. And so if I do choose a different indicator, it will be one of those that was requested by you. If you think that you have any relevant information, hints or tips about the topic of one of my videos, then please remember to comment so that I and other viewers can all benefit from your insights. Also, if you're getting value from this video series, then please remember to give me a thumbs up. But now until next time, trade safe.